welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a send you to sleep back massage. There are so many reasons why you might feel that you want a massage or maybe even just watch one on YouTube to help you get to sleep. Just recently I had a few days of complete insomnia which I don't get very often. Normally when I do it's because there's something underlying like a bug or something's maybe happening that's very stressful. And when you can't sleep, depending on whether it's complete inability to even fall asleep at all or just a bad sleep, it knocks everything off and then you can't focus, your energy's low. Sometimes you're just constantly hunting for more things to eat and drink to try and boost up that energy and then it's a vicious circle. So if you feel as if your sleep is suffering, sometimes I send you to sleep back massage can really help. It might not solve it, but there have been many situations where someone's had a lovely, relaxing, gentle massage a few hours before their intended bedtime. And it's helped to stimulate that tiredness soothe all the body systems, calm everything down and in the best case scenario they've had a good sleep. Even then they might say that they felt more rested, more calm. So whatever your reasons may be, whether you've got insomnia right now or you just enjoy watching a massage to get you into that sleepy zone, Let's do some send you to sleep massage and I'll talk you through why we do some of these movements and the effects they can have when you're tired. So the difference between a standard massage and a send you to sleep massage is that we don't want to have too heavy a pressure regardless of your client's usual needs. Or again, you might be working on someone that you know, you might be working in the house, maybe your partner or a family member or a friend just needs your help. So even if it's someone that likes quite a heavy pressure, don't take it any heavier than medium because this is about soothing. We don't want to work into the muscles. We're not trying to release tension. We're soothing the nerve endings. I should point out, as I always do though, if you have insomnia and there's a medical reason behind it, it's a good idea to check that you can actually have a massage, even if it is just working on someone in the house. Because sometimes a medical condition might be aggravated by a massage. Or sometimes you might be on medication and the massage could actually affect its absorption and how it performs in the body. So it's a good idea, if you're in any doubt at all, to ask. As I always say, it's best to find out that you couldn't do a massage than to do one and it wasn't the right thing to do. But I'm doing a very, very gentle effleurage. You always avoid the spine. When you're working over it, you release your pressure. But I've got a light to medium pressure here because I want to soothe all of the systems. I'm not looking to boost circulation. I'm not looking for erythema. I want to warm up the tissues. I want to make them feel nice and relaxed and tired. I can use some familiar movements. I'm using the full palm of my hand and I'm just stretching out the shoulders. And again, it's not too deep a pressure. I'm not looking to see a result in the skin. What I'm doing here, normally, when you're struggling to sleep, all your muscles are tight and tense. Sometimes everything's heightened and hyper. 
because you get yourself into an agitated state depending on what is causing the insomnia or the lack of sleep. It might not even be insomnia, maybe it's just a send you to sleep massage because you just like to watch something to relax to or you just want that little massage before you fall asleep. But either way, you might want that because you feel you need it. So stretching out and then draining. Stretch out. can get quite tight in the shoulders and if you're trying to sleep and you've got tight sore shoulders it's not impossible but it can make a real difference when you warm them up and stretch them out you can also just give the shoulders a little stretch either side of the spine and work down the arms to the elbows and then stretch again over the shoulder blades, over to the elbows. And this is very soothing. And what do we know about a good sleep? It's when you feel settled and soothed. No one ever got a great sleep feeling tight and tense. So we're soothing the mind, soothing the body. And if you're really enjoying a massage, sometimes you're not even thinking. You're just away. You're in a different zone. So it's not even a case of thinking about things that make you relaxed and happy. You might be beyond that. Sometimes all it takes is these movements and the person could already be asleep. So obviously they won't stay asleep for long because when the massage finishes you have to move. But if you can just get into that sleep state, it can make it easier to have a really good rest. You can then move down to the middle of the back. Just repeat the same again. Use your full palm. Big circles, avoiding the spine but working on the skin. We're not looking for knots and nodules, we're just calming everything down. And I've picked an aromatherapy blend that's designed for relaxation and sleep. You don't have to, you can use a body moisturiser, you can use a plain oil, but it might help if you have a little look, take some research into oils that work for you or whoever it is that you're helping to relax, oils that they like, that have relaxing properties, we're not looking to stimulate, we're looking to soothe and again I'm just draining so this time I'm draining towards the underarms nodes, we're always draining to nodes You'll notice with the send you to sleep, it's very simple. And again, this is not the only way to try and get someone to relax and switch off, but it's one way and it can be very effective. And then we move to the base of the back and we repeat again, big circles can often be a lot tighter down at the base of the back. A lot of people carry their tension in the neck and at the base. So if it is tight, again, it's not about applying more pressure to release it and it's not about working in and using the knuckles. Not today. Today is just about warming it up and soothing. drain you can 
do some more effleurage. You can either be straight to the neck and then sliding the arms down. Or it can be crossing over the hands. So whatever feels right and what appears to be working in that moment in time, go with the flow. If you want a little bit more pressure, but not a deep pressure, double-handed. Release when you get to the spine. Just working over those shoulders. Figure of eight, working over the hips. And then repeat on the other side. So all of those nerve endings are being soothed and settled. And there's a message going to the brain that's telling the person on the bed to relax switch off. And then sometimes it's actually good to press. Just press. Because again, that's a very soothing movement. Just pressing on areas. Very gentle press and release, and then slide down the neck. Press and release. And I'm building up heat, I now have more heat in my hands than I did to begin with. So when I'm pressing and releasing, that heat is travelling with me. And it almost feels as if I'm taking a little cloth with me that I'm heating little areas. And you know when you use a hot cloth, it feels lovely. And you press and release. Well, it's almost like our sleepy time version of that. You're pressing that warm, hot hand on the cooler skin. And it's sending a signal of feeling relaxed and ready for sleep. Again, I can just press at the base of the back and hold those warm hands there just for a moment. Hold the warm hands and just move them forward. And as I'm moving, I can feel the cooler skin underneath my warmer hands. And that again is so soothing and relaxing. And then I'm draining. And it's always a lovely feeling to just have the stroking on the back. And when you're stroking, doesn't matter the formation of the fingers, where they're going. Again, it's soothing those nerve endings. So you can alternate the finger stroking. Such a nice movement. Or you can just move in random formations. What we haven't done today is move into the scalp, but at this point, if you wanted to, we could continue up the neck and into the scalp and just use the hands just to randomly move different formations, keep that relaxation going, because head massage can be additionally relaxing, especially if it's for the benefits of helping someone fall asleep. And by this point, you might even hear snoring, you might hear a change in breathing that lets you know that they're moving into that peaceful place. So some effleurage.
just to give the massage its final soothing and relaxing moments. We've really built up a warmth. They'll be feeling much more relaxed than they did. There's no guarantees that they'll fall asleep. A massage can't perform miracles, but what it can do is soothe the systems, send some signals to the brain to let it know that you're safe, secure, relaxed, you're settled and ready for the most wonderful sleep. So all that's left for me to say is I hope you feel incredibly relaxed and ready for bed.